It's spring of 2004, a few years into Tony Soprano's reign as TV's most beloved violent criminal. And it'll be a few more before Walter White arrives on the scene. But here, a dusty, crinkly western hero comes sauntering into our living rooms. His name is Bullock, and his first act is to kill a man. This is Deadwood, and this is why we love it. Creator David Milch's HBO classic was an exploration of the dangerous and intriguing mining town of the title. We first arrive in Deadwood in the pilot episode, right alongside Timothy Oliphant's Bullock. And Milch's universe building is in full swing, a living, breathing, maybe not quite thriving, but definitely filthy world of scammers, weirdos, rubes, and everything in between. Sure, there are good guys and bad guys, saints and devils, but it's very often hard to tell who is who exactly. You got some mighty clammy hands there, partner. Damp palms running my family. Take Ian McShane's Al Swearingen, a fascinating walking, talking, cursing contradiction. Brutal yet mannered, street smart but eloquent, the double-dealing Swearingen is the town's de facto mayor, though he would never cop to that title himself. Always two steps ahead of just about everyone else, he runs the town while keeping it from running itself into the ground. Swearingen is also bestowed with much of Milch's uniquely complicated and stylized dialogue. Guess the dude's case money. Dude only out here three days. How's the dude ask his people back home for more? They're liable to send the Pinkertons. The character can be vicious and at times despicable, and yet that's just one aspect of him. The more we get to know Al, the less villainous he seems. Much like its cinematic antecedent, Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven, in Deadwood, determining the morality of a person or situation isn't as simple as a gunfight at high noon. If there's an exception to this, however, it's Bullock, a former marshal looking, like everyone else who has set up shop here, to make his fortune, or at least to make a living. But as buttoned up as the character is, Oliphant brings a seething, unimpeachable streak of good to Bullock. He can't help but do the right thing when he inevitably happens upon injustice even if it means hanging a man to save him from something much worse. You tell my sister, if my boy turns up, raise him good. What else? Tell him his daddy loved him. Tell him he asked God's forgiveness. This brings Bullock into the orbit of another newcomer, Wild Bill Hickok. The two form an instant bond based as much on their sense of right as on their respective abilities with a six-shooter. The most famous resident of Deadwood, which was of course a real-life place, Wild Bill is well past his prime when he arrives in town, supposedly looking for a fresh start, but in actuality, resigned that this is the end of the line for him. The rest of the characters are equally unique and memorable. The angry yet soft Jane, the dude from New York, who's a rich sad sack way out of his league among these con men, his lost and drug-addicted wife Alma, the indomitable prostitute Trixie, the guileless Reverend Smith, and so on and so on. But it's a, it's a solace having friends. I know that from past experience. By the end of the pilot, which is simply titled Deadwood, Bullock and Hickok have exacted swift justice in the wake of a brutal slaughter. But even as one family dies, Another is forming in Deadwood. It's a profane group, full of dysfunction, but we're already rooting for them. And that's what's at the heart of this show. It's about people who have nothing, in some cases nothing to even live for, who, in the creation of this burgeoning town, find a reason to go on, to work together as a society, and to be better. And that's why we love Deadwood. <laughs>